certainly feel like I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum of what people can relate with now that I'm talking about livestock management here in Cambridge. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, one of the things that everybody can relate to is they all came in the rain and they all came in a car. And if you were a livestock farmer, you wouldn't have access to the 100 sensors in your car, which tell you, you know, whether or not there's gas, whether or not there's oil, where you're going on your GPS. When they're managing their farms, they have no access to real-time data and no information with regards to the assets that they're managing. And this is not a small industry. There's over a billion and a half cattle in the world, and they're managed on a land size that's approximately the size of Africa. Overall, it's about a six and a half trillion dollar asset, which is managed largely with a pen and paper. Now, on a local level, what does this mean is, is that there's been no actual innovation. Fencing exists right now in the same form that it exists, slightly different with electric fencing, but it's the same effective product. And the, the animals are managed in a way which creates unnecessary expenses and missed revenue for farmers. And even if farmers want to try and optimize their property by adding more and more fencing, it's extraordinarily expensive. So we've created a solution in a wearable, the equivalent of your invisible fence for dogs meets Fitbit for cows. <laughs> what it enables farmers to do is create fences immediately on their, on their farms when they want them, where they want them, and move the fences. So think about the ability for a farmer to sit in his property tonight when it's raining outside and autonomously move his cows throughout his property rather than riding on his horseback and, and going out there. Or instead of at 5 a.m. in the morning to have to move his cows, he all of a sudden knows that they were automatedly moved throughout his property. Receive an alert that his cow is going into calving rather than have to spend three hours out in the grass at 5 a.m. in the morning. Our, far, our customer has an extremely low net profit level, and so a little tweak to the revenue and a decrease in expense has a dramatic ROI effect on their bottom line. How it works, uh, we use a lo low power, long range radio system to communicate with the devices. Each device has accelerometers, GPS in it. Uh, we use technology called LoRa, uh, and then we transmit that data up into the cloud. We perform analysis on what the animal's baseline behavior looks like, and we can detect what their fertility, what their health, all these different characteristics with regards to the animal to create value for our customers. Now, one of the things that people ask is why now? And, and I think that you all probably are aware why now. Everybody is caring more about what they're putting into their mouths or the mouths of their children, and whether it's grass-fed beef, grass-fed yogurt, or they're deciding whether or not they want to feed their kids grain-fed beef, it has a dramatic effect on the cost that goes through their pockets. The technology has changed pretty dramatically, uh, and so we're enabled to do this only in recent times. Our, our business model, we're gonna charge $15 per customer, per cow, per year. We're going to land them with fencing, and then we're upselling them on additional algorithmic revenues. Uh, so the ability to move your animals on, an, on a daily basis. This industry is huge, and we're not just building a fencing company. We're building a platform. We're building the backbone of the next automated livestock farm. We're here to create sustainable, sustainably raised beef for you and for your kids at a price that makes sense. Thank you, guys.